The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to worship with First Presbyterian Church of Hamilton Square. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? You can find it up on the screen or on page one of your bulletin. From Psalm 89, let us sing of the Lord's unfailing love forever. God's unfailing love will last forever. It is as enduring as the heavens. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we do give you praise that your love will last longer than we will because it will last as long as you are. It existed before us. It will exist after us. Your love goes on forever. And so we give you praise. And we give you thanks this morning because that love has come into our lives in Jesus Christ. That love has taken hold of us and it is changing us even now. And so, Lord, we ask that you would send your spirit in this time of worship to draw us even deeper into your love that we might know without a shadow of a doubt of how great your love for us is. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together. One of the ways God proves God's own love to us is in God's mercy and God's forgiveness of us. We become aware of that as we confess our shortcomings, our failures, our brokenness, our sin, and we ask God's love to bring healing and mercy and forgiveness to our lives. And so let's do that now using our prayer of confession. You can find it on page one of your bulletin or up on the screen. Together praying. 
Almighty God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We condone evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin so that as you come to us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Take a moment now to make this prayer your own in a time of silent confession. Now hear these words of assurance from Paul's letter to the Romans. God proved his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. People of God, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Because we are forgiven people, we're a joyful people, so let's greet one another with a sign of our joy. Well, once again, good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Hamilton Square. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning, especially if you're with us for the first time or for one of your first times, you're with us from out of town. We are especially glad that you are here with us this morning. And if this is one of your first times with us, we'd ask that you please do us a favor and fill out one of the welcome cards. They're in the pew rack in front of you. You can place that in the offering plate as it comes by later in the service and that will enable us to greet you more fully, but we would also uh, love to be able to help you get connected with this church. It's a wonderful church, and we know that there is a place for you here, and so we'd love to help you find that. And the, uh, the welcome card is a way to begin that process. Uh, I want to let you know about a few things that are going on. The first uh, that I want to let you know about is, is that we have a few ways that you can be serving our neighbors and those are, would be coming in the form of donations. Uh, one is supporting Ginny's Pantry. You know, summertime is often a time where people need food pantries more than they usually do. So much food aid for families in our community flows through schools that when school is not in session, they need food pantries like Ginny's Pantry more than they would, uh, might need during the school year. And so you can see a list of items that our food pantry is in need of, and we would encourage you to bring them, especially next week, as we uh, come to this table and we place our offerings here at the Lord's table as a reminder that we are fed at the communion table in order to go out and to feed our neighbors. Uh, and so we would encourage you, maybe pick up a few additional items on your trip to the grocery store this week and help a neighbor in need who comes to our pantry. The second is is that Trenton Area Soup Kitchen has put the word out that they are in need of some items as well for their clients. They have over 600 
people who use their services, or excuse me, 600 families who use their services regularly, and we can be a way that, or, or through us, a task can be supporting these families. What they need is they need full-size hygiene items, things like bars of soap, tubes of toothpaste, uh, shampoo, deodorant, uh, hygiene products, things like that. And then they also need socks, especially men's socks. If you could help us out with that, that would be great. You can find a bin for task items down in the reception area downstairs, and then our team that goes to task each month will be taking those when they head off to help again. I, I mentioned this next week, but I wanna say it one more time, is that our nursery is one of the most happening places here on a Sunday. The good news is, is we got lots of kids down there. What that means is, is that that also is sometimes, I wanna think about how I say this. It sometimes can be one of the more chaotic places on our campus on a Sunday morning. And that's a good thing, right? It's a good thing to have the joy of children in this place. Uh, what that also means is, is that we would appreciate it and it would be helpful for us and for our staff in the nursery and our volunteers down there that unless you are dropping off or picking up a child from our nursery, that you, you not stop in there. That way we make sure that the right kids go with the right adults. And uh, we wanna make sure that the right kids go with the right adults each week. So that would, be, uh, that would help us out immensely. Thank you for your help with that. Finally, uh, I wanna let you know that uh, we, one of our very own who grew up in this church and heard God's call to vocational ministry uh, was ordained this past Saturday. Tony Loretti was ordained by the Presbytery of Genesee Valley. Yep. So we want to say congratulations and blessings to him and to the Loretti family. And um, I just also want to say that this is a church that takes so seriously its commitment and vows that we take as a church at baptism to walk with children and to walk with people and to assist them and pray for them and grow with them as they grow into the fullness and maturity in Jesus Christ. And we have done that in so many different ways, but Tony is just a walking testament to how we do that in the lives of all kinds of children. So we should feel really good about this as well, uh, because this is a testament to how well we have done our work. Uh, with that, those are all of my announcements. So I wanna invite up the kids. So if you're young, come on up and have a seat on this front bench. I've got a, a book again, so I wanna make sure everybody can see the pictures. This Bible is more fun than all the other Bibles because it has pictures. All right. How's everybody doing this morning? Good, Good. all right. I've got my, my, my Bible here. This is one of my favorite Bibles. But I want to tell you a story this morning about when Jesus fed 5,000 people. Can you imagine that? 5,000 people. You know, that would be like if we had 50 of these churches filled with people and Jesus fed them all. It was a miracle because how much food do you think it would take to feed all of these people? A lot, right? Imagine if there were 50 of these churches that we were trying to feed. It'd take a lot of food, right? Well, Jesus did it all, and he did it in a special way. Let's see how he did it. It was a beautiful sunny day as Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee in a boat with white sails. Jesus had been healing sick people, and many people of all ages came to see him again that day. Maybe they could hear more of Jesus' stories or see him show God's power through another miracle. Well, when Jesus saw the large crowd of men, women, and children, he asked his friend, Philip, how are we going to get enough food to feed all of these people? And Philip answered, I could work for six months and not earn enough money to buy food for all of these men, women, and children. Do you see how many people are on that shore? How many people there are? They are. They're watching this boat here and because Jesus is going to be talking to them, but I think they're getting hungry. They look kind of hungry to me. All right. Yep. Well, the disciples didn't know what to do. Just then, Andrew pointed to a young child and said, here's a boy who has five small loaves of bread and two fish. It's something, but it certainly isn't enough food for all of these people. Do you think five loaves of bread and two fish is enough to feed 5,000 people? No. no. Do you think it's enough to feed one person? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. All right. 
The boy looked very nervous as he said in a small voice, Jesus, please take my food if you think it will help. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and two fish that the boy offered and asked his friends to have the crowd sit down. About 5,000 people sat in the grassy meadow by the lake that day. And Jesus gave thanks to God. He blessed the five loaves of bread and two fish. And then he shared the food with all the people who were there that day. And all 5,000 people ate until they were full. Look at that. A little bit of food right there. Look how many people. How's that working? Isn't that amazing? Well, then Jesus said, now let's gather up all of the leftovers. And do you know what? There were enough leftover pieces of bread to fill 12 large baskets, more loaves and fish left over than the boy had given to Jesus. The disciples shook their heads in disbelief as they struggled to pick up the baskets heavy with food. The people saw the full baskets of leftovers and began to understand that something extraordinary had just happened, another miracle. Jesus smiled as he heard people say, God must have sent Jesus to us. It was a day the boy, the disciples, and all of the people would never forget. How do you think that boy felt when he saw what Jesus did with his lunch that day? How do you think he felt? Do you think he felt happy? I think he did too. I think he saw that he was able to help Jesus and he saw what Jesus did with just a little bit and he fed everybody. Isn't that amazing? All right. Well, let's pray together. Let's thank God for this story and then we can go back to our families. Let's pray. I'm going to pray some words. You pray after me. Adults, feel free to join in. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the stories of the Bible and how they tell me about your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. You can head back to your families. And everybody else, let's stand up and let's sing together. In the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Bring new wine out of me in the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine in the soil. I now surrender, you are breaking. breaking new ground so make me a vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine
Please be seated. As we turn now to the reading and preaching of God's word, let's spend some time in prayer. O Lord, we turn once again to your word, to this place where you have promised to meet us and to speak to us in a way that only you can. We come here to be reminded of truth, to see your love and your mercy and your grace, to be grounded in what you have done for us. For some of us, that grounding feels urgent. We, we're going about our lives, and, and it feels like we, we can't quite put our feet down because we keep getting blown from place to place to place. We're, we're trying to, to make our way. We're trying to establish ourselves. We're We're trying to plant our feet in the ground and and nothing we've tried up to this point has worked. We realize that if we keep going on like this, well, we're not sure how it's going to work out, but it's probably not well for us. And we're wondering if there is something here that we could actually sink into that would support us, that would ground us, that would allow us to grow our roots down into something. For others of us, we have sunk our roots down into something, but we have discovered that what we've sunk our roots into is not giving life to us. We're wondering if it's too late. Uprooting ourselves seems like something we don't have time for. It, we don't have the ability to do it. But we're also not getting life, nourishment, sustenance. We're wondering if maybe here there might be something that we can actually sink our roots into that would give us life, purpose, meaning. For others of us, we, we've forgotten that our roots are, have sunk down into you. It's just so much of who we are that, that we, don't, we don't even realize it. And what we need is to be woken up to the reality of our lives that we are established in you that our lives are lived in you. We need that so that we might live our lives with joy and praise and gratitude. However we find ourselves here this morning, Lord, help us to believe that you see exactly where we are. You know where we are, who we are, You know the the depths of our lives, the good and the bad, the whole and the broken, the ugly and the beautiful. You know all of it. And while that might turn the world off because it's complicated and messy, 
and complex, you instead run towards us to give yourself to us in love so that you might bring healing and wholeness to our lives. Would you give us grace to believe that this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't think there is anything in the world better than fresh peaches. I'm not talking about the stuff you get in a can. I'm talking about a real fresh peach. Not the mealy ones that you get from the grocery store either, like the ones you get at a farm stand. Those are the real deal. Hands down, in my book, the best part of the summer is that like two-week period that you can get fresh peaches, really good fresh peaches. And I'm going to say something controversial. Please don't throw things at me because I realize what I'm about to say. And in this part of New Jersey, I think these might be fighting words, but I'm going to try it out. I think peach season beats tomato season. I told you, put the hymnals down. Don't throw them at me. All right. All right, well, I think my, my love of tree-ripened peaches, it started pretty young because growing up, I had a peach tree in my yard. Yeah. And it produced gobs of peaches. You know, peach trees are, a lot, are like a lot of fruit trees. They have on years and they have off years. And even in the off years, we had way more peaches than we could handle until we didn't. Peach trees don't really live all that long. You're lucky if you get about 15 years out of a peach tree, and then you have to plant a new one. And so it was a sad day when we had to say goodbye to our peach tree. And peach trees are not particularly pretty, and that tree was smack dab in the middle of our front yard, which was the only place that got enough sun to grow peach tree. So we decided to, to replace the peach tree with something else, which meant that after we cut the tree down, we had to rip the stump out of the ground. So we figured, how hard could this be? <laughs> we had a pretty big truck, and we went to Lowe's. Nothing easy has ever started with we went to Lowe's. We went to Lowe's and we got the biggest, baddest rope that we could find. And we thought V8 engine versus a tree stump, big rope, like we got this covered. This thing's in the bag. We discovered that there is a reason why we grind stumps down instead of rip them out of the ground. So we, we hooked the rope up to the towing hooks of our truck and the truck shuddered and it shook as we gave it more and more power until we finally realized that this was going to rip the back of the truck off before we ripped the stump out of the ground. What I think was truly astonishing, though, is that when we looked at the rope, the individual strands of the rope had fused together. We had applied so much tension to the rope and it had created such heat in that rope that it was not flexible anymore. It was a solid rod of whatever synthetic material that rope was made of. Now, I have been told by people who would know this that the part of the tree that is above ground is roughly only half of the tree. The other half is below ground. The roots extend roughly as far down as the tree is tall and about as far out as the tree is wide. And that's one thing when you're talking about a peach tree that only gets to be about 10 or 12 feet tall. But think about that the next time you look at an oak tree or a pine tree or a sycamore tree, which could be 40, 50, 60, 70 feet tall. In the case of a sycamore tree, a hundred feet tall or more. That peach tree stump wasn't coming out of the ground because it was firmly rooted in the ground and there was absolutely no way we were going to be able to rip it out. This is the image that Ephesians uses to describe the love of God in our lives and what 
happens to us as we receive the love and grace God has given to us in Jesus Christ. That our roots grow down deeply into the ground of God's inexhaustible love. And that means that there is nothing that is going to be able to rip us out of that. So this morning, let's listen now to God's word as we hear about how as trees send their roots down deep into the soil, in Christ through faith, we sink our roots down deep into God's love. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant you that may, you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pay you, pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Well, we're continuing on with our sermon series in Ephesians this week. And we come to this passage where the writer of Ephesians is trying to sum up everything that he has said about the reality of the gospel up to this point. Ephesians has already told us that the the gospel of God's salvation of the world in Jesus Christ is the foundational reality. It's the foundation of reality and that our inclusion in God's saving work is the core truth of our lives. And Ephesians has talked about how a key outworking of this good news, this gospel, is that an inclusive, welcoming community will form. That community is one that is united around Jesus, and it's built on the foundation of his life and death and resurrection, Jesus and the salvation that comes to us in him, the grace God has shown us in him, the love that God has demonstrated in him will be of such central importance in this community that has formed that all the other divisions that could keep us divided, things like sex and politics and race and gender and sexuality and socioeconomic status, and educational level, and background, and experience, all of those things will fall away because of the central importance of Christ and what he has done for us and for the world. And then finally, just before this passage, Ephesians restates this good news of Jesus Christ that in him all people, not just a select few, all people have been included in God's promises to bring healing to a broken world, to bring mercy to an unforgiving world, to bring justice to an unfair and unjust world, to bring love to a hateful and fearful world. And God doesn't just leave this good news for people to discover on their own, but instead God has called People, regular, normal, ordinary, everyday people, that's people like you and me and all the people who have gone before us, he calls us into a community to announce this good news through their words and to demonstrate that good news through the way that they live their lives. And that group of people is what we know now as the church. Now, for Ephesians, this is unfathomably good news. God is making good on all of God's promises. And God's promises are more inclusive and more far-reaching than we ever knew or could even imagine. And then by forming the church and empowering that church 
through God's own Holy Spirit, God has made sure that the whole world will hear this good news. No one is left out because no one is outside of the promises of God. And no one is beyond the audience of the church's announcement of this good news. By the way, that's one of the reasons why the church has been at the forefront of literacy efforts around the world, at putting languages into writing, at translating the Bible. It's so that the world can receive this message about Jesus. Now, the inclusivity of this gospel to us might not seem like such a big deal. But in a world where you had your gods and I had my gods and my gods took care of me and me only and your gods took care of you and you only, this is a really big deal. Because what this is saying is that there is one God who is concerned about everyone, who takes care of everyone, who loves everyone. And that is unknown in the history of religion up to this point. We take it as given. It is not given. Then Ephesians says that God not only loves and cares for us, but that this God wants to be in relationship with us. It's not enough for this God to simply claim us as belonging to him. No, this God wants to be in a loving and intimate relationship with us. And so God wants to live among us. You know, it's one thing to to put up with other folks as long as you live on the other side of town from them. We can claim to love them all we want. But then when they decide that they want to move into your neighborhood, or rather, when you decide that you love them so much that you want to move into their neighborhood, well, that's different. And in fact, God living among us isn't quite close enough. God wants to be so close to us that God in Jesus Christ, through the Spirit, wants to live within us. Next door isn't enough. And this fact, that God wants to live in relationship with us, not that We want to be in relationship with God and that God humors us, but that God wants to be in relationship with us and in Jesus Christ overcomes all that which keeps us separated from God. And like a tree whose roots go down deep so that it might stand strong, through the Holy Spirit, God roots us and grounds us in that love for us. Well, this is what brings Ephesians to its knees in worship. Why is that? Well, because Ephesians knows the conditions of our hearts. It knows how divided and how broken our hearts can be. Ephesians understands the reality of sin and brokenness in our lives, whether we have done those things and we've done our fair share or whether those things have happened to us. Ephesians understands the reality of that brokenness in our lives. And Ephesians understands that a broken and divided heart what the Bible might call a sinful heart is not a hospitable environment for God to take up residence. 
And that is exactly why Ephesians can't imagine, can't think of a God who is more glorious than one who would decide to take up residence in our hearts. You know, we're not the kinds of trees that are naturally inclined to send our roots down deep into the rich soil of God's love. It takes cultivation and patience and skill and hard work to coax us to grow our roots down deep into God's love for us. And yet that's what God does with each one of us. God's glory may be reflected in the beauty of creation around us, and that is certainly true. But God's glory is made complete by breaking into the lives of ordinary human beings like me, like you. It's in the transformation of people, the healing of hearts, the power of God made available to you and to me that, so that we might be firmly rooted and grounded in God's love for us and stand tall and strong in that love. Just as a tree is firmly rooted in the ground and stands tall and strong, Ephesians says, that's real glory. And that's precisely what God does. And it's real glory because it is entirely God's work. There's nothing we do to make it happen. When the peach tree was at the greenhouse, it didn't call out to my family and say, plant me, plant me. No, we picked it out. We put it in the ground. We cared for it. That tree was incapable of rooting itself in the middle of our yard. And we are incapable of rooting ourselves in Christ's love for us. Our part in all of this is simply to receive God's power, to receive God's presence, to receive God's glory with gratitude and worship. And so when we experience God's glory and God's power in our lives, when we notice that we are being rooted and grounded in God's love, the only response, Ephesians says, that makes sense is to fall to our knees in worship. To give thanks and praise to God. And so I wonder, what, what do you do to make sure that you notice God's presence, God's power, God's glory at work in your heart? What do you do to notice Christ dwelling within you? To notice that God is is rooting you in God's own love toward you. something that you do that makes you feel like you become aware of God's profoundly deep love for you. It's a way that it gives you life and sustenance and strength. It's a way that it feels like there is nothing that could rip you away. What do you do? And then I wonder, what do you do to encourage others with the good news that God loves them so much and wants to be so close to them that God chooses to take up residence within them? Imagine that thought. The God of the universe, the one who created everything, loves you so much that God wants to be within you at every moment. Because next door isn't close enough.
that announcement, that encouragement, the experiencing and the sharing of that good news is what Ephesians says is our task as a church. Our task is to announce God's unbelievable love for us and for the world so that the world might experience the glory of being rooted and grounded in God's love for us. That's good news. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the way that you love us We're not sure if the tables were turned and we were in your position that we would love us as much as you love us. Truth be told, we're not particularly lovable. And yet, you love us more than we could imagine. Your desire is to be close to us. Your joy is taking up residence within us and dwelling within us and among us. And Lord, we can, cannot believe how good that news is. And so, Lord, convince us once again of its truth so that it might change our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come now to a time of our service, a time of offering. And we take up a collection each week so that we might all have the opportunity to give to those ministries of this church whose job it is to announce this good news that we just talked about. That everyone is included in the promises of God. That God loves us more than we could imagine or hope. We demonstrate that in tangible ways, and we do that through all the ministries of our church, which are funded entirely by your offerings, and so we invite you to give with generosity. The ushers come forward. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we pray that you would bless these gifts, that through them we might show the world the heights and breadth 
and depth of your love for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to sing together. Please be seated. Each month we set a time aside, a time in our worship service to pray for God's healing in a special and intentional way because we know how much we need God's healing in our lives. And so if you are in special need of healing this morning or you are here standing in the stead of someone who needs healing, healing this morning, we invite you to come forward to receive a special blessing today. As these folks make their way forward, I also want to invite up our elders and deacons to lay hands on these folks. I want to invite up those of you who have been given a gift of healing from God or maybe you're sitting in your seat and you don't know why, but it feels like you are supposed to be up here praying for one of these folks this morning. We would invite you to come forward as well. And for everyone who is here, we would invite you to make this a time of prayer, remembering all those who are in need of healing and how you yourself might need God's healing this morning. To those of you who have gathered here, I ask you once again, friends, who is your Lord and Savior? And do you place your trust in him again this morning? And asking you the question he asked the man at the pool, do you desire to be made well? And let us pray. And let's all be in a time of prayer.
Together, let's all pray our unison prayer of healing. You can find it in your bulletin or up on the screen together. Gracious God, source of all healing, in Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. Hear our prayers as we support those who come seeking your loving care. May they know your healing touch in body, mind, and spirit, and be made strong in you to the glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, go in God's peace. Let's continue in a time of prayer. Lord, we are in need of your healing. We're in need of your love. We're in need of your mercy. We are in need of your grace. In fact, we're more in need of it at every second of our lives. And we become aware of our need as we look at our own lives and we become, of our, become aware of our world's need for it as we look out at our world. And we see all the places that are in need of grace and mercy and healing and justice, protection, power. We look out at our world and we see how many places how many things need you. And so we pray to you, Lord, would you act? Would you bring justice, peace? Would you show us mercy and grace? Would you display your love for all people and convince us of its truth? We pray for our world, for our community. We pray for our congregation. We pray especially for those who have asked us for our prayers, especially Alice, Alicia, Ashley, Brian, Cameron, Christine, Debbie, Debbie, Ian, Jane, Lorraine, Marilyn, Nick, Olivia, Paul, Tony Marie, for Bravo Company and all those whose jobs put them in harm's way. We pray for all those who are serving overseas. We pray for all those whose work keeps them from worshiping in person with us. And we lift up to you now those prayers that are on our hearts, whether we lift them up to you silently or aloud. Lord, we pray all of these things, trusting in your power, trusting in your love, because we pray them all in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you all to please stand and let's sing our final song together. I believe. 
judge and our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in you. I believe. saints communion and in your holy church i believe in the resurrection when jesus comes again for i believe in the name of jesus i believe in god our father i believe in christ the son i believe in the holy As we go from this place, may we be as a people who are convinced of God's love for us and that we are being rooted and grounded in Christ's love. May we be a people who believes that God is taking up resonance within us because that's exactly where God wants to be. And so as we go, we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the presence and power of the Holy Spirit this day and forever. Amen. Friends, go in God's peace.